Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about vanilla JavaScript and building something from scratch in vanilla JavaScript as a junior. So let's get into it. So the question in question today was a little bit of a story and it basically went, Frederick, I have started to build an e-commerce platform for my friend and I wanted to do it all without any libraries or any tools like that. So it's all built with vanilla JavaScript and I'm having a really, really hard time with it. And I'm wondering what I should do. Should I continue? Is it normal for juniors to struggle with this much? Because it's taking me weeks to just produce three pages that are up to my, my standards. Should I just continue the, in this fashion or should I switch to a framework? And the short answer is, it depends on what your goal is with this exercise in building an e-commerce platform for your friend. Let me explain. So first and foremost, right off the bat, I will say yes, it is normal for you. If you are a junior developer, I wouldn't even say you have to be a junior here. You can be any level of developer. If you are inexperienced with working outside of a framework such as Angular, React, Vue, it doesn't have to be an SBA framework, but let's just for the sake of argument say that we're dealing with an SBA. It is absolutely normal for you to struggle a bit because the days when people were building websites with jQuery, they're still kind of here. I mean, people are still doing it. It's just that it's not that common that you try to build an entire application with just vanilla JavaScript, unless, as I said, you're dealing with some type of tool or tooling, or you have a, at least you, you have experience dealing with this problem. I think that many people underestimate how hard it is to build an entire website in just vanilla JavaScript. You, f you need a fairly substantial amount of experience unless you're doing something that is fairly simple. And when I say simple, I don't, uh, what I mean here is not that, oh, you can animate some slider or you can have a, uh, some accordion or something like that. I'm talking about simple in the sense that you're trying to build a widget of some sort that does something fairly ba basic. That's something that you can certainly build with just vanilla JavaScript, but usually when you're dealing with a more sophisticated problem, such as you're dealing with routing, oh, that's, an, uh, that's a great example. And let's say that you have tried to make an entire SBA with just vanilla JavaScript. The first thing that's going to come and bite you is the whole process of switching out things based on routes. The second thing that's gonna come and bite you hard is the re-rendering. That is also a really big problem. How do you deal with updating the, um, the node tree, like the DOM, when something changes on the page? How do you keep these two things in sync? Because just because you change something in JavaScript, that doesn't mean that you're gonna automatically see it on the page. And this is a problem. This is one of the biggest problems that these frameworks are helping you solve. And then apart from that, of course, let's talk about state management. How are you going to deal with that? How are you going to make sure that all these different components have the ability to share information between each other and keep all of that synchronized? Now, as a junior developer, odds are that you have absolutely no idea how to deal with this because the people who know how to deal with this are either extremely experienced developers who have been dealing with this for years. Because as I've been saying, as I've said, the people who did this in jQuery may have a few strategies for, uh, for doing this because they were forced to do this before SBAs came along and kind of started helping us take care of all of these problems. So they have a few battle scars that can help them and guide them in this scenario. The other, uh, other group of people who can deal with this are the actual framework developers, the people who know the problems of the web when it comes to SBA development and they know what they need to do in or what problems they need to solve and how to solve them roughly and based on experience again it's experience so if you, if this person that wrote to me is asking should i quit this because if it's been taking you weeks to produce as i think he said three pages for your e-commerce platform for your friend then i think that you start you've probably noticed this thing that i've said before you have allowed your emotions to take over your judgment. Because no reasonable person 
at least no professional reasonable person would say say that you know what this is worth it this is a worthwhile investment for my client because that's the ultimately that was what it's going to come down to why are you building this because if you're doing this because you want to learn because that to me seems to be the focus here you want to learn how to work without a framework well then continue then there's no problem then there's no problem if you are willing to sit for three weeks and try to achieve something that you could most likely achieve in a manner of say let's say days with a framework well then I think that it's fairly reasonable to say that well that's a very large investment and if you were time constrained in some fashion then that would not be a good investment and it's not just about the time constraint it might be the case that this person who you're building this for well let's say that this web shop becomes a little bit of a success well it's gonna be hard to continue developing that platform if it's all written in your own personalized framework there's so many stories around different companies who've had this exact problem where some developer has come in they've rolled their own solution or built something completely from scratch without any tools or anything like that and showed off how smart they are and then there's they like they leave or they switch product or something like that and then nobody kind of knows how, what's going on and all the work gets hindered from that point on and that's the main problem with a lot of software projects you have a miscommunication between the person who wrote the code and the people who are going who are going to maintain it or continue that work and you've heard me say this many times before one of the most if not the most important things that you can do as a software developer is to make sure that the code is as simple as it can get and that means that it's comprehensible to other people than yourself because the project may not be in your hands forever it might be something that you hand off to somebody else and if you're interested in to, in making sure that the work can continue and making everything an easier time well then this is something you should consider i mean i'm pretty sure that you will appreciate it yourself because you might hand off something ugly to somebody else and get something even uglier in your lab when it's time when it's your time to to deal with this sort of problem so what i want you to take away from this is pretty much that well it's what i said to him, I said to the subscriber i said that if if you are trying to reinvent the wheel and you're trying to build your own javascript spa framework or something like that then just go for it. Like if it's just a learning thing, then there's no downside to it. If you if you're if you're interested, just do it. There's no stakeholder. It's just you. Go, go for it. But if you are actually working for a client, a paying customer, or somebody who is depending on the quality of your work, then I think that you should always always do what's right for the client and that is a tough pill to swallow i've worked with so many especially front-end developers who come to me and they start complaining about oh we're not using vue and i go no we're using react or angular or something like that and they say oh we're not we're using gulp oh, no we're using grunt and not gulp and oh we're using npm not jarn and i kind of go why did you take this job dude why are you here? Why are you why are you nagging in my ear about the choices that were made? Not I mean I didn't make these choices. This is what the product looks like. Is are we supposed to migrate all the tools every time you change your favorite tooling? Are we supposed to play catch up to whatever it is that you feel is the most important thing? It's not it's not it's not sustainable. So either deal with it because the thing is guys most of these tools they are good you can use them and if you know what you're doing they're going to work out for you and it's not a good idea it's not a good strategy to just have the perspective that oh we're just going to go with whatever we want or we're just going to pick whatever we prefer like what we emotionally want what's important is what's going to be the best choice for the product because that is the purpose of you working there your purpose is not to use your favorite tool stack your purpose is to pick the correct or to make the correct choices on behalf of the person who is paying you and if you can do that the project is going to be much better off than if you get to use your favorite tools as i said in this scenario this person spent three weeks 
working on something. If this was in a professional environment, this would have been gross ne negligence, I would say. And the customer, depending on deadlines and so forth, would may, may not have been especially happy with them. But this has most likely been for learning purposes. So if you're in that situation where you have to pick between the thing that you want to do and the thing that prob you probably should do, ask that question. What's going to be the best solution for the person that you are working for? Have a great day.